Hi there everybody and uh, welcome to another video. So on this video I have my Volvo V40 again. Um, this time uh, just to show you I have finally um, sorted out the engine light issue that I was getting here due to the um, O2 sensors. Um, because obviously I had the, my catalytic converter was stolen and when it got stolen, it got stolen together with um, with the O2 sensors and um, as a result I was getting the engine light. So in my one of one or two previous videos when I'm trying to deal with the uh, sensors, um, I wasn't able to resolve the problem because the fault codes kept coming back. But having said that, I was using um, some universal chip sensors. And um, I think the one I bought, the chip, well, I bought one for 30 pounds and that wasn't any good. And the other one I had was uh, one that I was I had lying around, um, which wasn't exactly for this model, it was for a Ford or something like that. So that wasn't working at all. Um, in the end, I had to bite the bullet and I purchased this uh, oxygen sensor. This particular one cost about, uh, I think it was around 70, 80 pounds. So not the cheapest, but um, this one I fitted, um, this one went before the catalytic converter so this one fits before um, the part number I used got me this which is for the one before um, I will try to put in the description the the um, original part numbers that I got from Volvo because Volvo are not actually doing the sensors anymore so I was told by them um, but they gave me the part numbers but I guess buying a uh, buying it from Volvo would be very expensive anyway so and then I bought this other one this Hella this particular one was for the one uh, for the part number that's the one sitting after the catalytic converter um, even though both sensors have the same connection so I don't know if there's actually a difference on them or not but uh, nevertheless you have to invest or pay the money if you want to get rid of the fault code. Um, so as you can see, engine light is out. I already driven the car for two weeks since I finished this and uh, nothing has come back uh, regarding the engine lights or the O2 sensors. So I just wanted to show you here the figures that I get for the O2 sensors, the voltage, so you can see if you're trying to diagnose a similar issue on your car. Maybe uh, looking at the parameter display will help you sort out your issue or if you need to replace them like I did. Uh, then the lambda stat status there. So in order for the engine light to remain off, these two here need to fluctuate the way these are fluctuating basically um, it looks like they fluctuate between 5 and 0 volts so the previous ones that I had in here they were actually reading below 2 volts or or 0 or, or whatever so they were just not doing the job as they should have been doing the job I guess this is the uh, the figures and the parameters that the car will accept in order to work properly and also we have a close loop so um, again before I was getting a close loop on and off occasionally open uh, but most of the time it was open so if you have an open loop there then the system is going to generate full code for some reason so there we are that's that's the figures more or less if I rev the engine, we still get pretty similar figures there. Maybe fluctuating a little bit more. But like I said, if this helps anyone, 
then uh, then that'll be good so on my previous video I already shown how to where these sensors plug in one of them plugs behind all of these covers so you can have a look at that video you'll be able to know how to remove all of this because you do have to remove all of this thing uh, in order to access the actual sensor connection and that comes in through the floor up here somewhere up here behind this cover and the other one is a little bit easier it's just sitting um, underneath uh, behind a rubber grommet which you can remove and then you'll find the connection and you just uh, this will come this two will come with the correct connectors and then you just uh, basically plug them in you don't have to be messing around with the wires um, which really helps now um, you can see the voltage what they're doing and also we could check the fault codes here read off diagnostic trouble codes so no DTCs and um, and that's it really that's what I wanted to to mention on this video because um, obviously my previous video where I replaced the sensors was not su successful unfortunately uh, but finally I have success I'm really happy with that but again I had to spend I don't know uh, 150 pound on sensors the cheap ones don't work so don't buy 20 30 40 pound sensors like I said this was about 60 or 65 this one was about 80 I think I think that might be the range of money that we need to spend if anybody spends any less and it works for you then do let us know so obviously we can all help each other I already spent the money so <laughs> I'm not gonna be returning them um, so anyway I hope this uh, video helps anyone that's trying to tackle that and um, we'll see you on the next video so thank you for watching and uh, hope this video helps and uh, don't forget to subscribe